Thank you, everyone. Welcome back to our mini lesson through the teaching dialogue. Uh, today is my honor to invite our special guest, uh, Dr. Sabgi Agondong and Anjun Lee, and also PhD students, uh, Tai Vi Kim from ASU. Uh, we would like to talk about the open source grade to demand tool, uh, which is used to generate the zone to zone travel demand matrix based on the open stream map, based on a grid zone system uh, we try to create uh, easily. So first, I would like to ask my special guest, Sabiki, to introduce yourself, followed by the uh, introduction by um, Dr. Lee, <clears throat> PhD student, uh, Tai Vi, and uh, uh, then we will uh, begin our dialogue. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Shusong, for having me. Um, I'm Sevgiar Dorn. I'm the research faculty at the uh, National Center for Smart Growth at Uni University of Maryland. And I'm the director of the Transportation Policy Research Group. Um, I have been the member of the trans, uh, trans, uh, TRB's Network Modeling Committee. And just recently, I became member of the Travel Demand Forecasting Committee. So I have been working with the uh, uh, travel demand models, both uh, traditional four-step models and uh, advanced, um, you know, uh, advanced models like DTLite, Transims, and Matsim. So I'm very excited to hear more about this new tool you have been uh, you have developed. Um, as you know, the one of the major uh, input uh, we need whenever we, we we develop a transportation model is the demand input, and we it's it's one of the most challenging steps in a model development. And if there is any um, practical uh, and automated way to gather data and create create a demand input that will be very very helpful. So okay, thank you so much. Uh, so the reason we, I have the second second speaker engine here because uh, he was your visiting student at the University of Maryland. Go ahead, introduction. Hi everyone, thanks for the invitation. I'm Anjun Lee, a visiting scholar from University of Maryland. My research interest is regional transportation planning and the transportation model. Okay, Tyree. Oh, uh, hi, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me here too. Uh, I'm, I'm also a PhD student uh, working, uh, working jointly with Dr. Ram Pandiala and Dr. Susong Zhou. And uh, my research uh, area is the, the developing the transportation planning model uh, with the machine learning algorithm. So recently, we uh, we are uh, focused on focusing on the developing the some choice models with a machine learning algorithm. Yes. Okay, great. So I will show uh, two more pages here. Uh, one is uh, since uh, Savigi and I, uh, both of us are the members of transportation network modeling and the TRB. So we hope to promote the open source network modeling tools. There are different categories right here. A category is try to export the way we can import the different network into the GNS data format. Uh, category B, this is the focus of today. We try to create a demand uh, matrix or create the supply parameters. Uh, by doing so, we are link the network to the simulation tool. Uh, which include uh, AB Street, Cube, Medicine, and you know, many other tools uh, we can imagine. And since uh, we are in ASU, we always try to promote this inclusive excellence uh, by using the different open source tools. So now I would like to uh, uh, turn the page to uh, Tai V. You can try to offer the first part of this uh, mini dialogue uh, to talk about the, the background information of the four-step four step process. Uh, this is, will be followed by um, uh, Dr. Lee's uh, uh, introduction on the grid to demand and the uh, hands-on exercise. Okay, I will stop the sharing. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, 
again, thank you for uh, uh, this presentation. And so basically the grid to demand is an open source trip generation and trip uh, distribution tool for teaching the transportation planning and application. So specifically users uh, can obtain the zone to zone or node to node uh, travel demand with a few lines of the Python code using the OpenStream uh, or the node link network file, which is also given by our another package, OSM to GMNS. So before we introducing the, uh, the grid to demand package, we first int uh, present the, the background knowledge, uh, background knowledge. So uh, generally uh, to understand the decision-making process, planners have implemented a typical four-step process. So trip generation, trip distribution, mode choice, and traffic assignment. So first, uh, first uh, trip generation uh, estimates how many trips enters or leave uh, traffic analysis zone, the TAG. And the second step uh, uh, estimates the trip distribution between the origin and destination zones. And third step is uh, estimates which travel mode is used such as uh, vehicle or transit or walk to complete the, those walks, uh, complete those uh, trips. And lastly, uh, the step four distributes the vehicles and traffic flow to different paths during the, these trips. So in this uh, uh, sequential process, the planners can consider the travel demand and the characteristics of the transportation network so that they can uh, actually measure the optimal transportation cost. So for the, this efficient analysis of the travel demand and this built uh, network environment, we introduced the degree to demand package where users can achieve the data consistency between these two dimensions. Uh, specifically, this package helps users estimate these uh, first two stages, trip generation and trip distribution. And therefore uh, they can map uh, travel demand information into the transportation network. So uh, first, uh, let's consider the first stage, the trip generation, and check what background knowledge used in this uh, package. So using the uh, uh, social demographic and the economic data, uh, such as household size, income, or the personal information, such as age or gender, we estimate the, uh, the number of a person trips uh, originating or the destination for the particular uh, traffic analysis zone. So trips can be grouped by the typical uh, classification, such as home-based work, or home-based other, or the non-home-based. So to model this classified uh, the trips in our package, so we use the trip rates given by point of interest. So for your information, the default trip generation rate refers to the IT trip generation manual. So this trip-based uh, the modeling includes the trip production and trip attraction. So which are modeled by a function of the uh, population and explanatory variables. For instance, so trip production in home base can be modeled by the total population and the number of the households or other social demographic uh, variables such as income. And the trip attractions in non-home base, uh, uh, for example, trip starts from the office uh, can be generated by the, the function of the number of households and the number of employees. So as mentioned, uh, grid to demand uses the, the trip rates from the POI, the point of interest, and computing the trip production and trip attraction. Then with the information, the package runs the, the second stage. So now let's see the, the trip distribution, which matches the uh, traveler's origin and destination. So with this uh, uh, trip distribution, we can see that the where trip starts and where trip ends. So to disaggregate the, the zone-based production and attraction trips, so we use the impedance, uh, such as the travel time. So for instance, based on the, this tra uh, travel time table, travelers would select the, the lower uh, impedance when moving from the origin I to uh, destination J. So there are two uh, conventional methods to derive the, this uh, trip distribution matrix. 
so gravity model and destination choice model. In this package, we selected the gravity model using the, the trip generation table and the trip uh, travel time metrics. So uh, let's see the, uh, this example. So by using the uh, trip generation and uh, the trip time metrics, the gravity model distributes the uh, production and attra uh, attraction uh, trips. That is a uh, uh, origin uh, destination metrics, which is, you can see this. So as marked in the red boxes, so when summing up the, the TH column one, this is matched with the, the uh, this trip generation uh, table, as you can see. And other uh, marginal variable or marginal values also matched with this trip generation table too. So, so basically the, uh, the, the principle of this uh, gravity, gravity model is actually adapted from the Newton's uh, law of the gravity. So the, the strength of the gravitational force is, uh, depends on, is, is depe depending on the, the distance between the two objects or the mass of, of, uh, mass of uh, uh, either or both objects. So as illustrated in the figure, uh, we can see that the stronger gravitational force between A and B then the force of the gravity uh, between A and C. So with this concept, uh, we derive the, the trip distribution using the, this uh, typical formula. So for the uh, OD matrix, this gravity model calculates the zone-to-zone -zone demand volume. So the T sub IJ indicates the total trips from zone I to J, and the P is a uh, uh, production uh, at zone I and A is attraction at zone Z. F and K indicates the friction factor such as the travel time and K is the, the social economic factor. So this background knowledge is coded in the uh, agreed to demand package and users automatically generate the uh, uh, two sequential steps, which is the trip generation and trip distribution and take advantage of the mapping the travel demand into the, the traffic analysis zone and network efficiently. Thank you. Uh, Sanki, so um, do you have any suggestion before we move to engine's uh, hands-on exercise? Uh, by the way, I also want to mention that, that all, all the other, uh, other contributors uh, to the package, uh, including um, uh, En Tai Wang, uh, another student in Beijing Jiao Tong University, uh, including uh, my student uh, Jay, Jay Lu uh, uh, from ASU uh, creating these uh, open stream map uh, converters. So uh, Saki, maybe you can ask a few more questions for us to motivate uh, this whole process. So that's great. Um... Are the tra traffic analysis zones uh, tied to an um, MPO model or can we define them uh, by census track or any other geography? This the first question is excellent. Uh, when we try to, I will leave the detailed answers uh, to engine. But uh, when we start with, with the whole process, we want to incorporate the TAZ, but when you zoom in, to a campus or a specific area, such as the University of Maryland campus. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a campus itself only have one or two TAZs. And yes. uh, so, so that is why uh, I would like to en ask Anjin to explain why we select the grade instead of the TAZ. Thank mm -hmm. you for your excellent first question. Any other questions such as ABN versus uh, the simple gravity model? Yes, um, so this this model sort of um, ta targets the tra traditional tradition demand models, right? The, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. So we try to develop a more advanced model such as activity scene or medicine type uh, uh, routing for the different schedule plans during a day. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's start with something simple. And uh, in the future, 
uh, uh, engine can introduce how we think we can expand this to origin destination, activity type, or more importantly, uh, we can try to uh, do a sensitivity analysis of a certain project, uh, induce the demands uh, in a sub area. So, so this is a simple uh, stage. Yes. Uh, how about the population synthesis or like using some sort of population, top gen or population synthesis to maybe um, generate the demand as well? Yes, we can, we can actually use a, a pop gen. Yeah, we can use a pop gen simulator using mm -hmm. the, the, the typical household survey data and uh, uh, the marginal data from the, the consultants or, yeah, or MPO, yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, any other questions? Um, let, let's hear the rest and I'm sure there'll be more questions. Okay, yeah, no problem, yeah. Anjun, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, well, let me share my slides. Can I see it? Yes. yes. Okay, thanks again for invitation. Just uh, as mentioned by Kim, we take advantage of point of interest data and the proposed grid to demand to forecast more detail about demand. Let's move to the framework to talk in detail. Firstly, the network is obtained by the OSM to GMS. It includes the POI data and uh, the network files and the POI trip rate will be used for grid to demand to get the OD demand. It's okay if there's no trip rate table, we can use the default values. Then based on the four state travel model, we partition zones by grid and the forecast production and attraction for each POI node, a boundary node, and the residential node, and calculate zone to zone accessibility. Finally, apply a classical gravity model to perform trip distribution and randomly get node to node demand for assignment. The output demand and the agent files are aligned with standard travel models for static and dynamic transportation management and planning. Okay, uh, so the first step to apply grid to demand is network preparation. The OSM file of the area of interest can directly export it from OpenStreetMap and the OSM to GMNS tool can convert the network from OpenStreetMap to routable CSV file in GMNS format. Here, the POI data may need manual modification because building types extracted from OpenStreetMap do not follow a land use type standard. Then import grid to demand, input the number of sales you would like or the sales size you would like. The grids will be automatically generated. You may ask why we partition zones by grid. Let's see the left side first. The red boundary is a census tract. If we directly regard it as a traffic analysis zone, most travel demand come from the north side. And the Traffic analysis zones have different shapes and size, you can see here. So such spatial biases may deteriorate the accuracy of travel demand. However, zone partitioned by grids have the same size and could reduce the spatial biases. Trip generation directly comes from activity node aggregating in each grid. In the fourth step, we are going to set the POI 
production and attraction rate of each land use with a specific trip purpose. Users can customize the trip purpose and the trip rate table. The default values are collected according to ITE trip generation rate table. There are three kinds of nodes can generate travel demand, POI node, residential node, and the boundary node. The value of production and attraction for POI node are calculated according to land use type, trip purpose, and the area of building or other unit of measurement. For residential node and the boundary node, users can directly customize the values of production and attraction. Uh, as shown here, the residential nodes production attraction value equal to 20 and the, the production attraction value of boundary nodes equal to 1000. So in step five, the values of production and attraction for each node are obtained. Next step is to calculate accessibility. A degree at different latitude represent different lengths on a flat surface. So we need to convert x, y coordinates into length on a flat surface according to the input latitude of the area of interest. Equivalent length will be used in the tool. Currently, the accessibility is measured by straight line distance between zone centroids. Later, we will calculate realistic travel distance with the shortest path algorithm. Finally, a typical gravity model is utilized to get zone to zone demand volume. This part Kim has introduced before. Here, I want to say the coefficients of friction factors can use the default values as shown in the table, or users can customize the coefficient ABC under a specific trip purpose. Based on the zone to zone demand volume, agent based node to node demand will be generated randomly. It's readily available for assignment. Due to all features stored in CSV format with geometry field, so it's easy to visualize the output demand and other features in QGIS. Okay, um, this is the hands-on introduction to grid to demand. Let me show you with a demonstration of ASU at Tempe, Arizona State. Firstly, we go to OpenStreetMap and uh, export the map of the area of interest we would like. We can drag uh, the box to get the map, then click export. Then we can download the map.osm. If the area is too large, maybe you need to use the mirror download here. Okay, so now I have downloaded the map file in OSM format, and then we go to run OSM to GMNS to get CSV files in GMNS format. The network have multimodal links and nodes. Here, I've already uh, get the network files, link, node, and the POI here, and then we go to run grid to demand. Here, we read the network file first and partition grid. Uh, you can set the number of X block, Y block, or get cell weight. Let's set cell weight to 500 meter and uh, height is 500 meter too. And the POI trip rate, we set the trip purpose equal to one and uh, use the default trip rate table. For each node demand, we set residential nodes demand equal to 15 and the boundary production attraction values equal to 800. Next, we will calculate accessibility. 
Here we set the latitude equal to 30. And uh, finally, we use the gravity model to get zone to zone demand. We just use the default value here. And let's run it. Okay, after get zone to zone demand, totally more than 52,000 agents is generated. You see here we have demand, accessibility, and the input agent for detail light or other assignment tool. Now we can visualize it in QGIS. First, we add layers. Let's see the demand and the zone. Okay, then we can change the symbology to make it make it look better. Uh, for demand, we, we want to use the graduate symbology to show the volume in size. Now we can sit and uh, classify. Okay, so here we can see, we can change it, the value from one to five. Okay, here um, we can visualize the zone to zone demand. There are some demand around the boundary. That's because of the um, boundary node production attraction from uh, like highways and uh, major arterials. And uh, some virtual zones don't have any demand. Maybe uh, there's no boundary node or other production or attraction in these zones. And uh, we get 500 height and 500 length for each grade. Okay, that's it. Do you have any questions? So our special guest, Savagi, <clears throat> maybe you can ask some uh, easy questions for us or suggestions. Yeah, this is great. Um, so th this this model, you, you picked a small area and generated the demand. But if we were to say that, you know, want to generate a, a model for, for a small town or city, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. How do we uh, incorporate the kind of external demand, or you know, the from you know, uh, this is I'm assuming capturing only the area th that we select, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I, I would like to just uh, add here. Uh, uh, many years ago, uh, sub we conduct this sub area study together. I think. Mm -hmm still need some additional tools to map the OD demand from the entire network into the sub area. Uh, yeah. At the current stage, we just set the default value of the boundary traffic at 1000. And the mm -hmm. one has to either run an OD estimation for the internal network or do something. Okay, mm -hmm. Engine, you go ahead, you can ask, you can answer this question. Yeah, this is a really good question. We consider the virtual zones around the boundary. Only consider demand come from uh, like freeways and uh, major arterials. So if we choose a city or town for research, uh, we can still use the similar method, just uh, input larger values of some boundary node come from freeways, highways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are, you know, you, you you input them at the boundary boundary zones, and if if they are boundary nodes, and yeah, if if you can get some reasonable values from maybe some other source, I don't know, that may be a yeah way to maybe approximate. Yeah, I think I totally agree. You know, we this is a one initial step of the data preparation. We mm -hmm. hope that we set up this framework, having this configuration ready. Uh, other can look at the what is roughly 
educate the guests of with the OD demand based on the point of interest uh, yes, distribution, yes. and and then they will figure out the importance of the network model is not about building the network only, it's all about collecting the data and use a data-driven approach to estimate the demand. Mm -hmm. And this approach is much easy for you to conduct a, a household survey or a cell phone, uh, cell phone uh, mobile phone data based in a survey. This is an initial step. Yes, yes, yes. And also, I guess you can maybe select a large enough like maybe buffer area around this, this you know, the study area you are interested in, and that may also be helpful. Uh, mm. I'm not sure. When generating the demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Currently, we just use the same values of production and uh, attraction for all boundary nodes. Uh, mm -hmm. We can consider to expand it, mm, consider more details uh, and the difference of different boundary nodes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, so, and and then this demand, when the, the uh, output we get, like the files you, you showed is CSV files, uh, mm -hmm. are they ready to go into like, say DTLite or? Uh, uh, yes, yes, all the format are, followed GMNS format and uh, the input agent file is already available to apply in detail light. Mm -hmm. uh, and also include uh, AP Street, which is uh, one of the very popular uh, um, traffic simulation games uh, in the GitHub. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, this will be very, very handy when, when you know, developing a, the from scratch <laughs> model, uh, especially for small and lo local areas, I think, because uh, typically local governments or agencies don't don't have uh, access to a, a travel demand model, or they don't have staff or you know uh, capacity to you know, use even if, even if they have access to an you know MPO model. So I mean, this this will be a very um, kind of easy to learn and easy to apply uh, tool in their toolbox. Yes, inspired from Federal Transit Administration, we also consider to expand grid to demand for some multimodal network, especially for a transit network. Then we, we can integrate a logic model to perform mode choice. That will be more useful. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. So this is the initial step. We have is called a grade to demand. So we, we hope uh, by uh, introducing this to the community that the more students, researchers, uh, mm -hmm. planners uh, are working with us uh, to produce the advanced version such as a chip to project, um, uh, land use to the demand, the demand to the supply. And uh, I think this is uh, a good, a foundation for us to think about. Yes, yes, I agree. And uh, if we need to deal with a very large network, we need to also make sure that the balance between the network modeling fidelity and uh, the complexity. Uh, if we incorporate all the point of interest, this could be quite challenging. So uh, someone can also try to apply an aggregated approach, try mm -hmm. to or focus the approach as we all understand try to uh, get the focus, major arterial, freeway, focused point of interest, and then uh, then step-by-step step try to show the um, aggregation of the data, high quality of the data into a regional model. Yes. <clears throat> I may have missed, the, where does the point of interest data come from? Is it from OpenStreetMap? Yes. Okay. So did you get a chance to check their um, their um, kind of fidelity? Like, are they are they kind of uh, good enough? Like the, the point of interest locations and uh, like bike path uh, facilities, are they you know realistic enough or are they matching the reality? Uh, so far, I think the location is exact, but what we should focus on is the building types. 
as said before, there's no standard of land use type uh, mm -hmm. for edit the map in OpenStreetMap. So we need to focus here. Yeah, as you can see, many, many yes for unknown building types. I see. That's really we should focus on. What I want to help here is uh, engine want to um, provide some comments about the mapping from the POI type to the different building type defined in the ITE chip generation rate table. Uh, because the OpenStreetMap itself is a open source community effort. So the definition of this building type, POI type, could be very different from the traditional ITE chip generation type we have. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, some, some additional research for us to consider. Uh, mm -hmm. In response to your early question about the quality of the data, the point of interest data now in OpenStreetMap, particularly in the United States, has reached a very good level of uh, accuracy. In terms of the freeway arterial tennis restriction, they have almost 90% accuracy uh, compared to the real life data. Okay, yeah, good to know because we work with some uh, proprietary uh, software, even they had some, you know, accuracy issues about point of interest the locations or their characteristics. So I think this is a very good start. Um, I mean, there is a lot of potentials and many different directions this can go. And I think it seems like your next step is to kind of making it multimodal. Uh, I think that's, that makes sense. And um, yeah, I think it, it, it makes sense to make this small example work with all the, you know, maybe limitations and so on, but at least something up and running and, you know, we can we can work with and then, uh, you know, start enhancing, building building up on. So I, I guess, yeah, that's a good start. And actually, I think uh, we'll work on another um, application of this this tool on, on our campus in Maryland. And I'm looking forward to working with Anjun on that. So I think we can, you know, we can create a really cool model. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Tyree, maybe uh, the last questions or the last comment uh, can come from you. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> I would like to just ask uh, uh, you to comment on how we can use activity-based model from this type of the open data set. Uh, okay, so once we uh, actually uh, further develop the, uh, these concepts, so we can actually uh, derive the each uh, traveler's uh, uh, information uh, map mapping with the uh, mapping with the network itself. So then the modelers can uh, efficiently uh, uh, generate the uh, the activity activity graph, and also can use that activity graph in the uh, uh, open source packages such as DTA Lite. So in other words, now people, instead of the uh, uh, having the difficulty of the generating the, generating the each site, that we can actually develop the, the whole, uh, the consistent data sets for ABM and the DTA. But I would like to also point out that uh, the challenge here is uh, uh, at the current stage, we are still looking at a sub-area study. And, uh, unless we're looking at inside the campus, the students or professors are working all day inside the campus. If you're talking about a uh, regional level application, then uh, how to get the uh, exact origin destination, the whole 24 hour uh, cycle inside the, the study area, this, this could be very challenging. But uh, uh, what we try to provide here is a very initial step. Engine, so maybe yeah. you can say the last word to our audience, and uh, I would like to just uh, finish our today's uh, session. And I thank you everyone's contribution. Engine, uh, I want to speak something more about here the area. Um, from OpenStreetMap, we can get um, each POI node area in square feet. For campus planning, there are many difference. So maybe for some specific use, uh, we need to change the unit of measurement to be uh, 
like number of students, number of faculties, uh, that will be more accuracy, I think. Um, so as said before, this is a, a initial process for grid to demand, and uh, there are many potentials we can extend. Thanks for your invitation and thanks for your interest on it. We'll keep on moving, thanks. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone and I will see you next time. Bye. Yep, Bye. thank you. Bye. Bye.